Welcome back to Let's Play Risk of Rain. Gotta get that hundo. I'm Brick Road, and this is all we're missing is three monster logs. The Ancient Wisp, the Ifrit, and the Scavenger. Feeling a handy run today. Oh, you know what? I didn't change my gamepad setting. These gamepad settings are always wrong every single time I come into the game. I don't understand why. This game does weird things with gamepads sometimes. So we'll see if we get a handy break today. We have the same targets as we did in the previous uh, video to get to the Ancient Valley and farm up Ifrit's there if we can. Except this time we're going to be playing as Handy and not whoever we played in the last video. I have been watching... A lot of Risk of Rain 2 streams. I, uh, I've been mentioning in previous videos that I'm not playing the game. It's not my kind of game, but I do enjoy watching it a lot. I like seeing the Risk of Rain gameplay in a different kind of uh, setting. It looks weird and wrong to me, but also very familiar. But I do enjoy watching the game. And the problem I have with shooter games is that I can't aim. I'm really bad at aiming in 3D space. This is most notably a problem for me when I play the Metal Gear Solid games, because that those games involve a lot of difficult aiming, intense situations where if you get it wrong, it's basically a, a failure. But Risk of Rain 2 is all about aiming. I'm gonna pop his rotten brain out, bounce on some fools. That's not what you want to see as your first and only item from the first level. Ugh. Uh, but people always... I've had people say the same thing. Uh, like if I... Because Risk of Rain 2, you start with a commando who is all about aiming. I mean, he's got... Just like this game, he's got three different kinds of guns. And they're useful in different situations. But people are saying, like, just play long enough to unlock Huntress. Because Huntress has the uh, auto target. And last night was the first time, I didn't, I wasn't playing the game, I was watching some streams, but I was watching some Huntress gameplay, and my thoughts on Huntress in this game are that she's a good class, but she's very mindless. All you really need to do to be successful with Huntress in this game is hit all of your attacks as soon as they come off cooldown, and constantly be moving and firing, and that's basically all you have to do with Huntress. Obviously there's more to it if you're going to be playing in a, that was a good brain spot right there. That was good placement for that bouncing baby brain happening. Uh, obviously there's more to the character, especially if you're playing on Monsoon, and you will change up your gameplay based on what items you get. But the main gist of the character, I think, is that she's a mindless character, which is fine in a game with 11 characters or so. But I don't think it's fine if Huntress is the only character you're able to play because she's mindless. And I was thinking about that last night as I was watching some Huntress gameplay in Risk of Rain 2 and thinking about the advice I've gotten from people saying just unlock the Huntress in that game and play her, then you don't have to aim as much. And I don't think I would enjoy the game if Huntress was the only character I was able to play. Got him. Good. But then that got me thinking about... How many people are there out there who tried to play Risk of Rain 1, this game here, and for whatever reason it didn't click uh, with them? Maybe they're not as good at 2D games, maybe they don't have the Mega Man muscle memory built up over 30 years like I do. Do they feel the same way about Huntress? Because I've, I've known some people over the years in Risk of Rain who uh, didn't like the game until they unlocked Huntress and then saw how powerful she was. And by powerful, what I mean is mindless. By powerful, she's not that powerful of a character. What I mean is easy to play. It's really easy to get a hold of proper Huntress gameplay and get a successful run going to the point where some players might be able to get that successful run going. Come on. Come on, get him, Brain. Get him, Brain. Uh, Brain got one of them. I'll take it. Uh, to the point where 
unskilled players without good knowledge or awareness of the game can get a Huntress run going if they get just a couple of lucky items versus someone like Handy or Mercenary where you really have to know how to play the character. Not where I want to see the teleporter in this level. Not my favorite spot for it. Let's see if we can get out of the drain pipe here. That's a lot of damage. That spitter got me, I think. Let's continue to, uh... Heal up here a little bit. Alright, let's see if the worm will come up through this platform. Actually, be more open down here. Ooh, I don't like the placement on these... Jump pads, though. It feels like every single magma worm I fight in these runs is dropping a Burning Witness after it being the very last item I had to unlock. Now we're seeing a ton of them. Uh, and so anyway, I know players like that who they didn't like Risk of Rain gameplay until they unlocked the Hunters and they're like, well, now I finally have a character I can do something with. Where really what they needed was just more knowledge about how the game works. They could have been successful with other characters as well. I seriously doubt any of those people put hundreds of hours into the game. Like, I doubt if you're... If you unlocked Huntress and that was like, Oh, cool, I got the character I can play now. Probably you didn't stick with Risk of Rain very long after getting a couple of Huntress wins. You were probably satisfied with that and moving on. That was a dumb brain arc. Terrible. Okay, let's get some healing going. The handy engine is pretty real right now. But we're going to need better attack options. Hey, there's some regen we can take. Speaking of healing options. Yeah, we're going to want some more attack options before too much longer. Did we get them all? No? Gasoline is good. And we're moving on. Wait, do we, do we have a boss for this level? Oh, the Magma Worm was our boss, right. And I put a Bouncing Brain right in his hitbox. You might say... He got a comprehensive education. You might say that. Anyway, man cannot live by Huntress alone. That's my, uh... Hey, cool, we got the Ancient Valley. This is what we're looking for. We want to see them if Ifrits. Uh, I actually might keep going through the loop, though, because we don't really have enough items to farm this level. We really need to be able to kill those spiders super quick, and it's not going to happen with this loadout. I do not think. Let's see if we got Boar Beach. Uh, if so, I'll, I'll complete this level. And then we'll go to Boar Beach, then we'll come back here for the other half of Ancient Valley. We do have Boar Beach, so... Let's get this going. Can I please... I probably should have thrown the brain at him, to be honest. I really need something better than the brain, <laughs> in all honesty. You know what I just noticed? The arms race item should affect Handy's healing drones. His little orbitals that he can stack up. They totally, it totally should. I actually want to see a Colossus here, I think. Hey, nice. You have that brain, sir. Um, the little voodoo doll, I don't think I want that, I think I'd rather keep the brain. Get some healing going. This is a situation with all these spiders. Quite a situation, and we didn't kill anything, which is what we wanted to see there. Don't, don't mind me, just threading my big old robot butt through some of these spider shots. 
I did say some of them, not all of them. Let's try that again. <laughs> That's going to be a really difficult level to farm. I was not foreseeing how difficult that level was going to be to farm. So yeah, we definitely want to do this on a loop. We definitely need to arrive at the Ancient Valley with a pretty good loadout. Something to get Handy's kill engine going. Something to, stand, to get that crank turning. Because I always envision Handy's gameplay as a machine with a crank. Once the machine is on, it has enough inertia to stay on. But you need the strength to turn that crank the first revolution. And if you don't get it, the machine doesn't start up. Handy has up to 10 little healing orbitals that he can have. Let's see. Oh, I got stepped on. I should have jumped a little sooner. I thought I had one more second. And just enough time to throw one more punch at him. I did not, though. Uh, up to 10 healing drones. He gains a healing drone every time he kills an enemy. So if he has the ability to kill an enemy, especially with some AoE or splash damage, something like a Will of the Wisp, or even like a ukulele or ceremonial dagger is a personal favorite. If you can kill one enemy, you can get enough healing and roll that healing into killing more enemies. And you can get into a nice rhythm of always having healing drones when you need them. But if you get into a situation where, like I was in the ancient valley just there, where you're retreating from enemies and don't have any healing drones, well... Somebody put baby in the corner, we'll put it that way. This is not exactly where I like to see a teleporter here. Who do we got now? The Vagrant. I did not mean to throw a healing drone there. Get out of here. Dodge the bugs. I would like to actually have the bugs. If I could, please. The bugs use item. Nice. Instead, I got a piggy bank. And a concussion grenade. Not what you really want to see. If I'm being completely honest. Not great items to start with. Healing drones are also handy as only ranged attack. But you see, this early on glass, I'm pretty much using a drone to kill each enemy, which means I'm getting them immediately back after they seek out and destroy their target. That situation will not last forever, and it will not work against this Gwalum. Lemurians, though, are no problem. This actually isn't a bad little kill floor here. I just need some more items to make this work. Where my items be at, monsters? We are running with Glass Sacrifice. It's my preferred artifact loadout. Glass, so we do way more damage, but have way less health. And then Sacrifice, so monsters drop items rather than needing to open up boxes. Although Handy is quite good with drones if he gets them. Which you cannot get with Sacrifice turned on. Looks like we're almost there. Ukulele is not a terrible item. It is a little bit of splash damage, but only if we're up close and personal. If we're going to take a tier 2 splash damage item, I might rather have the Frost Relic and get my blender going. This run is going to be all defined by what we get and when we get it. Right now we have no real good offense and no real good survivability. We do have the Mysterious Vial for some extra health regen. But with only 67 health... It may not be enough. I do find handy runs are a lot more successful if you get a really good use item to attack with because then if you get into that position where you're on the defensive and you can't get that first kill to get your machine going a good attack item can go a long way to getting that moving that's that's why i wanted the the boogers off of that wandering vagrant didn't get them but in fact i feel like i haven't seen any boogers in a while 
haven't played with him for a long time. I better check this corner down here. It's uh, not there. Okay. It's really easy to miss a corner in this level as you're moving around because you want to start climbing up or dropping down before you've scrolled the screen all the way to the side. And that's a really good way to miss your teleporter and end up doing another lap around the level. Just in case you were looking for a good way to be less successful at this game. That's a way to do it. Okay. And there's my Twala Porter up top. This is an okay kill floor, I suppose. I might just hang out right here. Let's see who my boss is. The Ancient Wisp. It's a little more healing. And we're dead. <laughs> we're dead right there. I thought my hammer would come out in time to take care of all his little ads. It did not. Handy's not my best character. I don't know what possessed me to want to play Handy today. I just felt like it. I felt like being a big, fat robot. And nobody can begrudge a man those days where he just feels like being a big, fat robot. I do find, like I said, handy. I'm a lot more successful if I get a good use item. And, I mean, every character is more successful with good mobility, but mobility is especially important for handy. Maybe we'll get our bugs this time, though. Maybe it'll be all good. There are them bugs. Here, and I gotta heal. Get out the way here. Continue the punch. And my bugs. I got them. I got a good use item with handy. I like it. I like it a lot. Never mind, I just lost them. That hammer. Such a bit. You know what? I'm not keeping this episode. I'm not keeping this episode at all. We're going to put Huntress back on. We're going to quit the main menu. Welcome back to Let's Play Risk of Rain. Gotta get that hundo. All we're missing are three monster logs, the Ancient Wisp, the Afrit, and the Scavenger. And we're probably going to be going back and forth between three characters until I get them. The Huntress, the Commando, and the Chef. Maybe with some Sniper thrown in there. Today I'm feeling Commando, though, with his awesome Commando roll. Uh, the goal of this video is the same as the last video. We're going to try to get some items, enough to survive in the Ancient Valley, and then farm the Ancient Valley looking for Ifrits. Uh, I'm still undecided on whether or not I should loop the first time and then try to get to the Ancient Valley. I think it's really going to depend on what kind of items I get. If I get there on actual level 3 in this run and I have the survivability, I might be okay. And I might just stay there and farm. The problem with farming level 3, as we've learned, are those spiders. The spiders can be a bit too much in a lot of different ways. The spiders... Especially if they all stack up on you and start shooting in like a straddled pattern, they become very difficult to dodge. Wandering Vagrant! I feel like I haven't had no bugs for a minute. Can I maybe get some bugs, please? I would like some bugs. Let's wait for my cooldowns to come back.
Kill the Vagrant from the inside. Make this thing regret ever swallowing you. You know what? Infusion as my first item, I will take it. This is the second ep the second time I've tried to record Risk of Rain today. I started out doing a commando run, and I got my infusion as a first item, and then my computer hard locked, and I don't know what caused it, and I had to throw out about 20 minutes of footage. A lot of times, the <laughs> OBS does this stupid thing. Uh, actually, a lot of screen recording software does it. It's not just OBS, but if you're halfway through a recording and something causes the recording to stop uh, abruptly, it'll keep an MP4 file, which is a movie file. It's the movie. It's the type of movie file that I work with is MP4. It'll keep that in the directory. It'll just be corrupted and unreadable. And there are ways to uh, kind of repair that sort of corruption in some cases. I have, a, I have a couple different methods of doing it. Uh, sometimes I manage to recover the data and then I end up not using it anyway because what can I do with half an episode? Sometimes I manage to recover the data and I cobble something out of it. And sometimes I spend... Wow, we're getting great items today. Great starting items in level one. Incredible. Uh, sometimes I'm like... I'll spend two or three hours trying various data recovery methods and nothing works and I just have this unusable mp4 file. Today none of those things happened. Today it was more like, you know what, I don't need that run. <laughs> Whatever. I do have a directory in my Steam local files for Risk of Rain where I have just a library of all my save files. I make sure to back it up every time I'm done recording from this series just in case something like that happens and I have to revert to a previous save so I don't accidentally start a run with, say, an item that I hadn't unlocked on screen. And this was the first time that we saw a hard lock, any kind of data corruption. I just I just threw away 20 minutes of unusable commando footage. It's just funny that I got infusion as my first item twice in a row. Usually getting infusion as your first item I don't want to say it guarantees your break. You're, you're not guaranteed a breaking run by any stretch of the imagination, but we can't do anything up there. I don't know why I went that way. Uh, but it certainly helps. It certainly does. Can I have a goat hoof, please? Let's destroy these childrens. Okay. I guess we'll check up here and then head over to the right. Get out of the way of those missiles. We don't want to be anywhere in town right there. Um, no teleporter. Okay, that's what I was... That's what I was wanting to see. I was worried that Orange Elite was not going to fire in time. if Because I, I had to cross through his hitbox in order to get where I was going. And Orange Elites... If you're standing too close to the hitbox the moment they fire, you will eat that missile. And I wasn't that hungry. I was not so hungry that I wanted a missile. I am hungry enough that I would eat, like, a bowl of mac and cheese. It's difficult for me to envision a timeline where I don't eat mac and cheese. Alright, are we going to get an Ancient Wisp here? And if so, are we going to get our monster log here? We are going to get an Ancient Wisp. We are going to take some damage, so let's back off for a moment. In fact, let's do a kill floor down here and go for that Wisp Blast. The problem with the Ancient Wisp is as soon as we kill him, he's going to spawn in a bunch of Wisps at his location. And what I want to be able to do is shimmy down that rope when that happens until I can assess the situation. But for now, we're going to make this our kill floor. This is a pretty good kill floor with Commando. We just need a little more healing. Hey, there's a great use item. And we got some fireworks to go with it. Delicious. Never seen the fireworks in action. We once did a breaking run when we got, I think, 500 fireworks with the Command Artifact and just kept stacking them up. Excellent item. Excellent item. Will help us kill healthy enemies. Well, a lot of really good items really early in this run. 
definitely what you want to see if your goal is to get a break going. And we kind of do want to get a break going, because we're going to farm that ancient valley for as long as we can hold it together. And see about Ifrit. Yikes! Okay. Let's get out of here. I'm going to go down here. There's nothing down here yet. This will give us just enough time to regenerate. Although, this is kind of a hole that I'm in back here. That's No, that's not safe. Let's get out of here. Uh, okay, things are good. Things are, things are looking up. Is that a... That's an orange elite, isn't it? We gotta take him out first. Okay, we got another mortar tube. All the parents are dead. I don't want those panic mines, I don't think. Those aren't the panic mines. What are they? There's permafrost. Excellent. Great tier 3 item. Look at all those wisps, though. That's the problem. You know what? Get him stunned. We're just gonna keep doing that. Let the full metal jacket stun them. Knock this one back. Boom. Got it. Permafrost. This will freeze enemies when we hit them. And any on-hit item is great for Commando because he puts out a lot of bullets. His standard attack is actually two hits. So, you got lots of chances. So we're going to dodge roll through these nerds. Nice. Beautiful. Pop this box one more time. We're going to take a sticky bomb. Chance to blow enemies up on hit. Love it. Love it. I was thinking about my Huntress run that I did in the last video. And thinking about my reaction to Huntress uh, when I first started playing the game, when it was new. Because I'm one of two or three people that I know that is still playing Risk of Rain. We didn't get the Ancient Valley anyway, so we are going to have to loop. Cool. Uh, many years on, I'm one of two or three people that I know that are still playing this game pretty, at least semi-actively, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know anybody who plays it religiously, like every day I gotta log into Risk of Rain, but most of the people that I know that picked this game up and played it uh, quit after a little while, which that's what you do with every game. You play a game until you're done with it and you move on. I just happen to have not ever been in a situation where I thought I was done with Risk of Rain. I'm gonna go up top as a kill floor, I think. Do we kill this first? I think we kill this first, don't we? Uh, smart Shopper. Uh, more gold. It's not gonna do any good until we get a golden gun, but okay. But a very common feeling was that a lot of people thought the game was way too hard until they unlocked Huntress... And then like, oh cool, I have a character I can finally play now. My thoughts on Huntress that I went into in some detail in my... I did a Let's Play series of just the Huntress, of a Huntress uh, win. I think she's a very mindless character. I don't think she's the most powerful character in the game, but she is the easiest character to play. Because really to get a successful Huntress run going, all you need are to, one, not be playing on Monsoon, uh, two, get a couple of lucky items. Not a lot, just a couple of decent items. And three, hit your cooldowns as soon as they pop up. You just always be hammering your button, always moving and firing, throwing that glaive and that explodey shot, getting it all out there. And you can get a pretty good successful Huntress run going with just... Uh, with just that advice. Can I have a second permafrost, please? Okay, I don't even know how that stacks. I would have preferred, I think, literally any other tier 3, because we already have this one, but hey, you know. Beggars can't be whatever. Uh, but I was thinking about that, because a lot, like I said, a lot of people I know play the game, thought it was too hard, didn't want to stick with it, until they unlocked Huntress, which takes a sizable amount of playtime to unlock. I mean, you gotta get 15 monster logs. That's not an early unlock in this game. And then they had some fun with Huntress, uh... Syringe is awesome on Commando, thank you. They had some fun with Huntress because, hey, now I finally have a character that I can actually play. No harm, no foul, right? But 
because Huntress is a kind of mindless character and because players that gravitate towards her very early tend to not want to play other characters, I feel like the game loses its luster a lot sooner than... I'm going to go counterclockwise, I think. Uh, a lot sooner than with someone like me, who clicked with another character very early. Mine was the sniper that I clicked with very early. Stuck with the sniper long enough to learn the game, and then started moving over to other characters. I feel like if Huntress was my only character to start with that I could felt that I could play, I would not have stuck with the game that long. And I've been thinking about this in light of Risk of Rain 2 coming out, because... As I've mentioned, I'm not playing Risk of Rain 2 because it's a shooter game and I'm bad at shooter games. I, I don't find them particularly enjoyable in large part because I'm terrible at aiming in 3D space. But what that means is I've had a bunch of people tell me, hey, you know what, you can go ahead and play Risk of Rain 2. Just unlock Huntress. There's your character. You don't really have to aim that much. We got a Toxic Beast? We do. I'm actually going to let the Toxic Beast live and farm its little piglets for my infusion. That's what we're going to do here. That's what happens next. Unless we accidentally kill the Toxic Beast with our... Ooh, there's another Tier 3. That's the hit list, my man. Heck yeah, let's do some assassinations. Get that attack power up. I love it. Uh, so I was watching some Hunter's gameplay the past couple nights on... Uh, the Twitch.TVs, which is a website where you can watch people play video games. For some reason, people like watching people do that. So, And I think my assessment of Huntress is the same. She still looks like a mindless character. In the context of that game, I mean. I mean, you still have to be good at movement and aiming in 3D space. We're getting real lucky with our hit list right now. I dig it. Uh, but compared to the Commando that you start with in Risk of Rain 2, and compared to the other characters I've seen, like uh, Multi... I've watched a lot of multi-gameplay, people are liking him a lot. Huntress seems to be the mindless character of the game. And so I wonder if I did take that advice, if I played Risk of Rain 2 and unlocked Huntress and got some good runs going with her, would that be my problem then? Is, uh, like, okay, good, I, I, have a, I have a character I can play, but she's the most mindless character in the game, so this is going to lose its luster really quickly. I'm not sure. I do not know if that's the case or not. I know that what I one of the things I really enjoy about Risk of Rain is having several different characters that I really enjoy playing. Uh, being able to pick characters based on your artifact loadout, based on like what your goal for the run is. These are all very interesting decisions, and I think you kind of need to have... Oh, I didn't realize I killed my beast up here. Oh, well, whatever item that Toxic Beast dropped is just gone for good, I suppose. Just as an example, I love Sniper in this game. Sniper is one of my favorite characters to play. But Sniper's not a great breaking run. Once you get a, a breaking run going, you it's much more satisfying to have a character with super fast attack speed where you can just hold the button. Someone like the Commando or the Huntress, or Chef. Uh, even Handy can be fun. We've got a Toxic Beast. I don't know where it spawned. It's over there. So I'm going to go this way. Make sure my kill floor is off screen here. So we can farm the beast for infusion properly this level. Not that horrible sideways version of farm the... Toxic piece like we did last level. Actually get it done. We also got the little booger buddy somewhere. I didn't see where I picked up a filial imprinting, but yeah, I got little booger buffs happening. Got a warbinner. Like it. So when I do want to do a breaking run, I think Chef is my favorite break, but Huntress is a really good break. Commando is a really good break. Sniper, not so much. Uh, Mercenary can be a really fun break because you get that awesome spin jump going. Handy is not a, a super fun break. There's my Hopo Feather. Love it. But if my goal is not to get a breaking run going, I might pick up one of those other characters for some reason. Like, I really like Handy for 
a drone run. If I'm going to be picking up a lot of drones, I like Hand D for that. Because Hand D can be played passively. And the healing drones really fit his motif. I'm going to open this box before my teleporter event ends. Boom. We got a knife and a, oh, we got a mortar tube out of that as well. We're getting really good hit list luck. I'm not really paying attention to where my hit list is going. I'm just kind of taking on faith that eventually I'll fill it up all the way. But it seems like we're getting pretty good luck with it anyway. Oh yeah, farming them piglets. Gotta get that pork. It's what's for dinner. That, that, that was the wrong meat. It was actually a different meat that had that slogan. Hey, let's get a second booger, buddy. Let's just stack them all up. So we are going to go into the loop. There's a brilliant behemoth. That's exactly what you want to see. And a guardian hurt, so we cannot be one-shot. The items are pretty real in this run. This has all the makings of a successful break happening here. This is really my run to lose at this point. So we do need loop until we see the Ancient Valley so we can start farming Ifrits. And we will farm Ifrits until their monster log drops or we die or the game crashes. One of those three things happen and hopefully it's not a game crash. I do think monsters spawn faster after you loop regardless of what difficulty you land on. Although I don't... I don't know a way to prove that one way or the other. I would have to try looping without actually having any time on the clock, which is obviously impossible. I guess I could just, like, spend an hour in this level... Uh, on, like, insane... Dif starting at insane difficulty and keeping careful record of the spawn rate and then doing the same thing, but without looping first. But man, ain't nobody got time for that. I'll take another knife. My teleporter over here? No, it's not. Let's get out of here. Get out of here. Is that two items there or just the shield? Just the shield. You know what? I'd rather stick with the... Uh... It's a really good use item to have on Sacrifice. The captain's wheel because you can get you you can get some use items you can make use of fireworks which is otherwise a dead item with the sacrifice artifacts kill mr colossus here and get a second rusty jetpack very good i'm glad i stayed there for that the verticality is real one more Hopo Feather just for additional adjustments in midair. I don't need the extra height, but having another adjustment sometimes is very, very good. So, primarily that's the reason I like to have a couple Hopo Feathers. You get Hopo Feathers for adjustment. You get Rusty Jetpacks. Okay. Okay, just stack them up. I don't know where I'm wearing all these Jetpacks. But Rusty Jetpacks for the heights. Uh, farming the Ancient Valley would be much less difficult now because I can be off the ground for quite a lot of time so the spiders are not as scary as they once were all right who dost we have how about a magma worm a eh? hey how about two magma worms sure We got boxing gloves now. Oh, I will go pick those up in a minute here. Let's not get killed by jellies, eh? Okay, this is actually a bad situation here. Because we are off our guardian heart. Okay, there it's back. There's another burning witness. I feel like all the magma worms are dropping burning witnesses now in my runs. All right, let's move over to the left here. The monsters are getting pretty real. We want to we want to heal up a little bit. Let's see how long we can hold this ground here. We'll be able to hold this ground until we either get overwhelmed by monsters on this platform or until missile elites start piling up underneath us. When one of those two things happen, we will have to vacate the premises.
Yeah, boxing gloves on Commando can be kind of annoying because you keep pushing monsters off your kill floor. And if I can't get the kills going, I can't get my charge field generated to extend down there. Look at all those monsters we've got stacked up down there. Uh, fireworks will take care of some of them once we get our fireworks back up. I like you some crit glasses. I'll take them. Put the box down here, okay? That was real dangerous, actually. However, I just saw two healing items drop. So we got the Mysterious Vial for the passive regen. And the first aid kit for the heal on hit. That is heal when monsters hit me, not heal when I hit monsters. Like, I take the damage from the monsters, but then... I get a heal a few seconds later to kind of mitigate that damage a little bit. I don't even have a clover and the items are coming fast and furious now. Look at that verticality. It's real tasty. Excellent. Wanted to lure as many monsters as I could in my shotgun blast there. Get them all going. Got my next hit list there. We're going to fill this hit list up real quick. More gasoline. Got him. I thought for sure that guy was going to be off my hit list by the time I killed him. But he was not. Alright, what's my level 2? I guess I guess level 2 here doesn't matter. Level 3 is we're looking for the Ancient Valley. Otherwise, we got to loop again. And the more we loop, the more danger we are in crashing. The two hour mark seems to be about where the game is really in danger of crashing out, in my estimation. I've had runs go longer than that, but typically there's a lot of idle time in runs that go longer than that. Although idle time can also be... You can see a magma worm on this level. I think you can only see it in the loop. I don't think it'll spawn in as the level boss. But yeah, if you're looping, you can see magma worms on this level. Where you at, buddy? I don't have enough money to afford that box yet. Didn't want to stay in one place and get mobbed by jellies there. That wouldn't have done anybody no good. That magma worm dropped a sickle. Nice. So now my critical hits will heal me. Which is good because I've got... How many crit glasses do I have? I've got only two pairs. But we will have many, many more pairs someday. Alright, give me an Ancient Wisp and let's see that monster log drop. I guess you can get a Magma Worm as the level boss here. Is Magma Worm just a common boss here and I've, I'm misremembering? Is that the problem? Second charge field. I'll take another bitter root up there. Whole bunch of dice. Whole bunch of dice. And a war banner. I don't see what that magma worm dropped. Oh, he dropped another sickle over there. Neat. Gotta say, it's nice to get a charmed run once in a while. Now if we can only turn this into the monster logs we need. I do have a 100% save that I downloaded. Saves for Risk of Rain are basically just INI files or just plain text files that you can download real easily. Uh, typically to stream it. So I like to stream this game once in a while and get a break and run going. So you need a 100% save to do that. The second time I've had to download 100% save because uh, this has happened once before. 
where my save data got corrupted or unusable or accidentally deleted or something. That's a terrible place for that box. Mm. All right, we're gonna have to deal with that. We can do it from right here, right? Barbed wire. Another fun item if you just want to stack like a million of them. My feeling back in the day was, hey, you know what? I did it all legitimately once. Why should I have to do it again? The thing was, though, I think that the, the file that I downloaded previously wasn't correct for some reason. Because it's not... It, 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 the game doesn't actually keep track of stuff that you unlock or items that you get or achievements that you earn or whatever. All it does is has a list of variables in that I&I &I file, and you can just edit them to say whatever you want. And the one that I downloaded was incorrect in some aspects, so I actually had like 123% completion or something, and the bar went all the way off the screen. Because he typed in like two like a, a numbers in the wrong spots. Oh, we got a loop again, because this is not the Ancient Valley. This is not a useful level to us. There's nothing useful we can do with this board. Let's get away from this bladed clay man. I was going to see if I could hop up to the top from there, but I think I'd rather not fight that bladed clay man with 10,000 hit points. We got to get some more move speed. Uh, a red whip would be excellent to quickly move through these levels since we need to find the teleporter quickly and then loop. Uh, I'll just use this as a kill floor, I suppose. It's fine. We got a blazing vagrant here. Uh, you know what? No, I don't like this as a kill floor. I've changed my mind already. Let's see if we can stay here long enough to get that box. Another sickle. Okay, we'll take it. Pop the box for a war banner. Yeah, I think I'd rather be over here. Less chance of items falling into the hole over here. Ooh, although we're going to have to contend with that stupid mess up top there. Yeah, I don't know. This is not a great place to get the teleporter in this level. But I don't feel like uh, going all the way up to the top. We'll go up that way if things get too dire and we have to escape. But I don't foresee that happening. Not with close to a thousand hit points and a guardian heart on my side. Yeah, the situation up top is scary, but it's not insurmountable. And them boxing gloves, though, man. Like, everybody just... Be in another zip code, please. Who's dying over here, I wonder? And are they dropping anything? They are not. They're hanging out. A whole bunch of dudes over there were just like, you know what, we don't have enough bullets. What can we do to get more bullets? I know, let's ask Commando very nicely if he will share some of his many, many bullets with us. And you know what, fam, I am delighted to do so. Okay, took a big old chunk of damage there. It happens. Let them charge field tick do some work. Give it with the shotgun. Just clean up the house a little bit. And then this guy should be no problem. Wonderful. Oh, you know, I do have to go all the way around again. Because there's still monsters up to the top right. Kill this guy with fireworks. <laughs> hey, a monster tooth. I didn't see that down there. I have been really enjoying watching the Risk of Rain 2 streams and stuff, even though I'm not playing the game. 
Uh, I have a lot of games like that, actually. I'm like that with Binding of Isaac anymore. Back in the day, I at least loved playing the Binding of Isaac. I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I kind of fell out of love with it. But I still love watching the people play it really well. I don't know if Isaac Racing is still a big thing, but there were a couple years ago... Where there was a couple different Binding of Isaac Racing Leagues that had different rule sets that they would use. I find Isaac very hard to wrap my head around these days. There was like a sweet spot. When Binding of Isaac first came out, I didn't like it. I thought the game was too luck-based. Uh, you either got good items and won, or you did not get good items and you didn't win. That was about it. Uh, then they came out with the Wrath of the Lamb update for the Binding of Isaac, which added a lot of stuff to the game, but not just like new items and characters. Like It added a lot more decision points to the game. Little ways to kind of make your own luck. And that improved the game dramatically in my eyes. Uh, Isaac, then they remade the game, they came out with Binding of Isaac Rebirth, and I thought the same thing. Like, it was basically Wrath of the Lamb with a couple of extra things. But I feel like Afterbirth, which is the next expansion after Rebirth, was kind of a little too much. It was kind of too much on the side of there's too many bad items in the game. Maybe even Rebirth was a little like that. It's like Risk of Rain in the sense that you have to unlock items to be able to drop during your runs. But there are a lot of items that are either just bad out of the gate, like you never want to pick them up, or are so situational that for all practical purpose they're still they're just bad. And the problem that Isaac has always had, and, and I in all of its different incarnations. We're going to farm this Toxic Beast again. So let's go over this way. Let's not accidentally kill it with fireworks or something. Let's go all the way over here for a kill floor. Isaac has so many like just cool items to play with. But none of the cool items are as good as just getting more attack power. There are some cool items... That, like, when you first get them, you're like, oh, I got this great feeling item. I got the quad shot, or I got the the brimstone, or I got, like, even the soy milk. Oh, it just feels fun to use. But without the just attack power to back them up, no amount of fun items are going to get you anywhere. So as a result, if you play item, if you play Isaac, like, even a little bit seriously, the items you're looking for are just the attack power items. And you'll pass up some of the more fun items... Because you know what you really need are the attack power items. And that does make the game kind of dull and samey, which seems strange in a game with so many items and so many different item synergies. But it's the truth. It's You know the good items are just the plus one to attack power or whatever. And the fun items are almost an afterthought. Like... You gotta get your attack power sorted by a certain floor, and then maybe if you have if you happen to have a fun item, you can get a good run going. And that's on top of the game just has a lot of really of just bad items that you just don't ever want to take. And I see why they had to put so many bad items in the game. Because uh, the main character, Isaac, has an item that lets you re-roll any items that you see. And so the game, for a lot of people, for me included, becomes about re-rolling until you get the good items. And when that's the case, that basically means re-rolling until you get the attack plus items. It's a little too bad that's what the game devolves into, but it's the only way I know to be successful at the game. You can get runs going with other characters, but they are a lot more luck-based. Alright, we can kill this Toxic Beast now. Four Plasma Cell and a Monster Tooth. Nice. Attack faster at lower health is something that sh should never have to come into play here. Hopefully. Hopefully I should not be at low health at any point. And if I am, it's a character flaw on my part. Timekeeper Secret's a good safety item. If we do get knocked to low health, it'll... Pause time for a few seconds and give us enough time to 
maybe get out of dodge if need be. But we do have to loop again. We've got to loop and loop until we get to the Ancient Valley and start farming up Ifrit's. I started playing another roguelite recently called 20XX. It's like a, the Mega Man X style roguelite. Feels real good. Oh, it feels so good. Just it feels like Mega Man X at his best. The level design is actually... I was actually surprised. It's better than I was expecting. Because it's randomly generated, but it's not like randomly generated out of individual tiles. So it becomes just kind of a boring smorgasbord. Rather, it's generated out of uh, like specific sections. I think Spelunky works the same way. Like each level has a pool of say a hundred screens or so and it can mix and match those screens together as need be. But I was actually impressed with how how nice the game felt once I had the controller in my hand. It feels real good to play. Very important in a roguelite like that. But I and I only have a couple hours of experience with the game up to this point. Obviously I haven't unlocked everything, I haven't done everything there is to do. But I feel like the game might have that same problem where it feels like it's always best to get basic attacks. To get your basic attack to be as powerful as you can. That really feels like it's going to always be the winning strat. That game has Mega Man style items that you can unlock and you can equip I think three of them at a time. But none of them are as good as just having your basic attack with really high attack power. I guess you could say the same about Risk of Rain, technically. But Risk of Rain, once you start getting a really good... Your, your good build is about how how are you passively killing enemies. How are you doing it with your... You're keeping your charge field up or getting your gasoline or your will o' wisp going. It's about sustained kills rather than just surviving individual dungeon floors. And maybe that's one of the reasons Risk of Rain has more lasting potential in my estimation. But I don't know, I'll definitely be going back to 20XX at some point. We're definitely going to be playing some more of that. And then we have, I guess, at some point, they're coming out with the, that Zelda roguelike. That's going to be the, the based on Curse of the... Uh, Crypt Curse. No, not Curse. Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I think I've talked about that game before. I thought it was a fun little diversion for a while, but it, it didn't bite me hard. But I think I could revisit it as a Legend of Zelda game. We'll see. I definitely didn't play that game long enough to identify any actual failings of game design. Like, I didn't play it long enough to the point where it felt like every run was the same. I think I just played it long enough to get a win with the main character. Then I was like, alright, that was a fun little game. Maybe that's just a hard problem to avoid with roguelites in general. Like... You're going to gravitate towards the most efficient strategy eventually. And... In a game about killing monsters, that strategy is pretty much always going to be about attack power. Right? Like, attack power is always going to be your most useful stat. Seems like a hard problem to solve. I think a roguelite that actually solves it might. Might really have potential to bite me hard. Might really have potential to get me into it for a long period of time. Alright, going into our third loop. I've only got one goat hoof. Just the one. Keep it moving over here, boss. The hit list is maxed out, speaking of making your base attack power higher. Hit list might be one of the kinds of items I'm talking about. Like, all it does is raise your base attack power, but at least it does it in a kind of interactive way. At least it's like, oh, you actually have to 
kill the monsters that have the target on them in order to get the benefit, but after you do that, the benefit is permanent. At this point in the loop, it really, most of the level comes down to just surviving the teleporter event. It takes, hey, there's our golden gun, finally. We can put those smart shoppers we got to use now. Again, golden gun is just attack power up, but you have to amass a lot of gold before it fills all the way up. If you get a quiet moment, you can see the little golden gun meter just to the left of my character, although it's inside of all of the other garbage surrounding him, so you have to look very carefully for it. And it's already filled up. You're going to look for the little brownish yellow vertical bar to the left of my character. You see it's already filled up because I got 10,000 gold. The reason we're getting so much gold is because we have an item called Smart Shopper that makes enemies drop more coins. Okay, we got a Plasma Chain as our Tier 3. Actually, we, got, we already had Tier 3 for this run. We have two Permafrosts happening. The combination of Permafrost and Boxing Glove pushes the monsters away so quickly, it's hilarious. I don't have any Frost Relics yet. There's another goat hoof at long last. Mm-hmm. Who likes fireworks? I like fireworks. I like crit glasses too. The Ted Patient always sets in and just let all the monsters spawn and then kill them all at once hilariously. But that's an excellent way to crash the game. And we actually do have a goal today we need to meet. That involves not crashing the game, if possible. Two more enemies here, and then we'll move on to level two and spend two minutes there, and then we have another shot at getting our Ancient Valley. Actually, both versions of level two are useful to us because we might see the Ancient Wisp there. We do have to farm level two eventually. Eventually. Moving on. The absolute god luck would be getting the Ancient Wisps monster log in the next, in this level. And then getting Ifrit's monster log on the next level. And then going to the Contact Light and getting the Scavenger monster log there all on the same run. Do you suppose that could happen? Do you suppose that's in the cards? Probably not, right? I didn't see where we got the big laser. We must have picked up the laser turbine somewhere. I didn't see it. I think my favorite tier 3 to get right now would be the Ceremonial Dagger. I love me some Ceremonial Dagger, but... Definitely not necessary to get this run going. The run's already going. This is our run to lose right now. I don't see a real convenient way to lose this run. A lot would have to go very, very wrong. An overloading magma worm is a good start, though, to lose a run. Because you can jump right through your hitbox like that while your guardian heart's not up and it can all be over. Oh, there was no item up here. It was a foreign fruits. I circled back around to get this magma worm's item that he dropped. We got him with the laser turbine, though. That was kind of cool, sniping the magma worm with a laser turbine. We need to not get zapped by a million jellies at once. Uh, leeching seed will help keep me nice and healthy, though. All right, I think we're out of the woods on this level. That could have gotten dicey, but I think I played that about as well as I could have. We're in the part of the breaking run now where we're going to get items faster and faster and faster. And this is the point where I always say I don't like Command on for a breaking run. This is why. Because imagine having to stop for a second and open every one of these chests and pick a particular item. Breaking runs are way more fun when you just... You just stack up random stuff in giant piles 
Although, there are certain specific breaking runs that are fun. A popular one is to stack tons and tons of barbed wire until it's off the screen. I wouldn't mind seeing more bosses spawn in more quickly, though, getting some more Ancient Wisps happening here. We're at max difficulty, but that's actually a lie. There is no max difficulty. The difficulty just keeps going up and up and up and up in this game. Dude's up top? What? Who's up here? How is there one imp? Way up here in no man's land. So, now that I have the uh, pink embryo, sometimes when I pop my chest, my use item, I'll get two chests. Like right there. Thanks for the demonstration. More fireworks, more gold. Sure. Alright, take me to the ancient valley. Country roads, take me home to the place where I belong. This is not the Ancient Valley, by the way. This is the Sunken Tombs, which means we're looping again in this run. We're going to loop again. We're going to do it. I really should not be fighting this Blighted Sand Crab, I don't think. All he dropped was dice anyway. So yeah, we're really not looking for any more items at this point. Any items we get are just a nice little bonus. So there's no point to actually fighting monsters yet. Let's just go ahead and find our teleporter and have done with it. If you've never seen a run in this game where you just stack a million barbed wires, it's really, really fun. What character series do I have still remaining? We still have Mercenary, I know. We still have Miner. Maybe when I do a Miner series, we'll do Glass Command. And we'll stack Barbed Wire for days. Maybe that would be the conceit of that series. Because all Miner's abilities hit when you go into the... Ooh, hello! Miner's is all about going into an enemy's hitbox anyway, so you might as well have barbed wire if you're doing it, right? Uh, if I get one more Hopo Feather, I could probably traverse this level from the wrong way around. Who's over here? Just some buttheads are over here. Hey, what did I just say about getting another Hopo Feather? Where'd my box land? Dude, where's my box? It's up here. And we did get two of them again. Lovely. I think I'm just gonna keep the box. We just might keep the box for the whole run. It's a good use item. And we get some good attacks out of it. Since we're up here, I guess we'll finish out the clock. This is a good this is a really good kill floor. A lot of nice space to just go back and forth, and monsters are not super deadly on a on a plane here. They're a lot deadlier in the ancient valley when you gotta watch out for spiders shooting at you, but the only projectiles you have to worry about are the whorls, the little snail men, and they can only fire very uh, short range. So a nice flat killing plane is very good in this level. Your left, who else? Who else dares to exist? Probably a bunch of dudes down in the little nook, right? I didn't want things to get too crazy in that little nook, which is why I got out of there. If a bunch of blue enemies spawn up there, it could still mean death for us.
Ooh, nice. Reduce some cooldown. If we could stack a couple of those alien heads, we'll get infinite machine gun. Which is a beautiful thing to have on Commando. Alright, we gotta loop again. We gotta go all the way around the levels. So about three minutes per level, give or take. We get a chance to see our ancient valley once every 15 minutes or so. I don't have money for that box yet. And we do have another Guardian's Heart now, though. You know what? I'm just going to chill here until I do get money for this box, I think. We'll just let the homies spawn in. I don't know if Cremator can spawn in this version of the map. I think Cremator can only spawn in the version of the map where this is one large lava pool beneath me here. Or maybe Cremator just can't spawn to this spot. And he can spawn elsewhere. I'm not scared of Cremator in any event right now. I don't think the Cremator could take me. Blighted Wisp. Is this my kill floor here? Is this what we're doing? Got some Toxic Beasts. Gonna get some more Barbed Wire. Two Barbed Wires, a Goat Hoof, and a Gasoline. Alright, so we're starting to get a little faster now. Yeah, this will be fine as a kill floor right here. Fireman's Boots! We're going to set the floor on fire. We were always already kind of doing that anyway because of Burning Witness, but now we just do it passively. Is that another pair of Fireman's Boots? It is. I don't have any idea how that item stacks, but okay. We have two boots on each foot now. Actually, more than that because I think we've got Head Stompers and down there somewhere. Maybe we're wearing boots on our hands and one on our head. I will take another infusion. I think we're up to 2 HP per infusion now. Because you get 0.5 HP for each one you stack, I think. I think we have enough HP in general now. We're not gonna... The Guardian Hearts are gonna prevent us from getting one shot by anything in particular. And our HP total is looking pretty respectable in any regard. It's really just we need to find that loop. We need to find that level. That's really what it comes down to here. At least we're not looking for a particular version of a level like we were when we were hunting down artifacts earlier in the Let's Play series. There's going to be a bunch of monsters down below in the lava pool once we're done with the teleporter event here. Thank you for the other go hoof. Oh yeah, we're getting fast now. Oh, you know, we might be under a speed buff. Because of the fillies. Yeah, there are monsters all kinds of downstairs here. I didn't see what that monster was. It was hiding behind that use item. Hiding behind that captain's wheel. Alright, take me to Ancient Valley. Show me a whole bunch of Ifrits, if you would be so kind, please. I think I'd like to see the big bridge version of Ancient Valley. And just get up on that big bridge and... Because Ifrit likes to spawn up there. The only other place Ifrit likes to spawn is the bottom left corner, and that's not a great kill floor to have. Alright, next up is the temple. We can't really do anything here. We haven't seen any scavengers at all in this run yet. That's the only useful thing we can do here is fight a scavenger if one deigns to show his ugly mug. So we will prioritize killing any scavengers that we see. Like that one. Where's he at? 
Where's he at? There he is. Okay, got a brilliant behemoth again, but no nothing. No monster logs. Again, if we do see a monster log drop, I'm going to go ahead and complete the run. Because we don't want to risk the game crashing again. But hey, it's nice to see that we're seeing scavengers now. Scavenger will never spawn in as the level boss. They only spawn in after you reach a certain difficulty. But they will spawn in any level. You can see them anywhere. They do seem to be more common on some levels. Like, I want to say they're more common here in the temple and in the contact light. You see lots and lots of scavengers. There's my Twalaporter, and I like this as a kill floor when I've got the verticality to use it. So good on you. Okay, now we've got our little Imp Familiar. Would really like to see a Frost Relic at some point to help deal with these flying Lemurians. Another goat hoof. More fast for me. We got a lot of these boxes too, I feel like. We got a lot of these arms races, don't we? Oh, I thought I had eight of them, but no, those are the med kits. We've only got two arms races, we just got them kind of back to back. So my silly monkey brain was tricked by psychology into thinking that we have more arms races than we actually do. I hate it when psychology tricks me. Psychology always wins. I took some psychology classes in my uh, two years of college that I completed. And at the time, I was going to just a small like local community college. And I took all of the psychology classes there because it's just a topic that at the time it really interested me. I don't think I would say it interests me anymore, but it did when I was in my late teens, when I was 19 years old, I was kind of into the topic. But I took all the psychology classes that, that course had to offer, and the only other course that they did have was a more, I think, like, more vocational class, like a child, it was like, like, specifically child psychology classes. Uh, I think actually Peanut needed to take one to get her degree, to go into teaching with special needs students. She needed to take this child psychology course. But at the time, I wasn't sure if what, if I should take that class or not. So I asked my professor at the time, like, hey, I'm thinking about taking more psychology courses. Would you recommend that I take this one? He said, why on earth would you want to take more psychology courses? And at the time, I was thinking, like, oh, like, why? Like, this is a bad field to get into. And he knows because this is his field. And he knows it's a hellscape from which there is no escape. But maybe it was reverse psychology, like maybe it was a test. Like he was actually seeing if I had what it took. I chickened out and I didn't take any more psychology courses. I did not take the child psychology course. Uh, in order to pursue it past that point, I would have had to take the credits at a different college. I would have had to enroll somewhere else if I wanted to take that as a career path. So I ended up not doing that. But I was, all, it was taken aback because it wasn't just... It wasn't like a probing question. Like he wasn't like, hmm, like why are you, why are you showing interest in this? Like why why do you see yourself doing this as a career? Perhaps it was like, why? <laughs> like, dude, I just bought Kingdom Hearts three. Why? Why would you do that? Can I have another infusion, please? Yeah, let's stack them up. Not what I wanted from him. I wanted the monster log from him. I want my Twala Porter first. We're at an hour played in this run. Lots of vagrants, lots of bugs. Let's get them going. And some Magma Worm. It's an overloader, of course it is. At this stage in the loop, you would almost expect that. You'd be disappointed if it wasn't an overloader. 
That was beautiful. That was a beautiful thing. That's the second magma worm I've sniped with that turbine now. Finally a clover. We're really going to start rolling in items now. I'm kind of just glancing at my health bar. I don't care how much health I have left at any given time. What I care about is whether or not my guardian heart is up. If I have gray life on my health bar, that means my guardian heart is up and I, I can take one hit and not die. Guaranteed. The problem with the overloading magma worm is the magma worms are built out of individual segments. It's not all one monster. The way they get it to animate properly is they build it out of a bunch of different segments. And each segment is overloaded, which means it gives off the little crackling blue energy of a blue elite. And all of those segments can kind of hit you at one time if he passes, if the entire worm passes through your hitbox. It makes the worm very dangerous. This boss, more than any other boss in the game, I think, even more than the Cremator, players who are new to the game will express like how unfair the overloading magma worm is. Because overloading magma worm is more common than Cremator. You can see overloading magma worm very commonly after you start looping, which even an unskilled player is going to do once in a while. Whereas the Cremator you only see on level 4, and only in a certain version of level 4. You only see in the magma barracks. So I think most players have trouble with the Magma Worm, the overloading Magma Worm, before they have troubles with the Cremator. And it's a very difficult boss to deal with for a lot of players. For a lot of characters, I mean, if you don't have certain items. Commando and Huntress and Miner can pretty much always deal with the overloading Magma Worm because you can just be very careful about when you're dodge rolls are on cooldown. I don't like this situation. We're going to shotgun and see if we can blow a bunch of fools up. There we go. Is that my auto-target missiles? It is. We finally got them. Alright. Moving on. Three more pickups and we'll have items off the screen. We'll check the far edge of Sky Meadow first. There's my teleporter right away. Excellent. More overloaders. Then we just sniped two of them with the turbine there. No, we got all three of them right there. Beautiful. I don't like that as a kill floor, though. Let's come back down. Uh, you know what? I don't want to be down there because of the jump pads. Right here is probably good. We can hold this. We can hold this space for as long as we need to. That's a parent gets in my way. That was a just a short tactical retreat. That's all that was. Preferring to see the Ancient Wisp here because we still need that Monster Log. We got a great run going as far as items, but it's terrible in terms of our actual goal of seeing those Monster Logs. We'll get him eventually, guys. We just gotta plug away at it. I actually don't remember grinding for the Monster Logs the first time I unlocked all, like, everything in the game because... I was just playing so much of the game. We were playing it... Well, for one thing, we were playing multiplayer, and I think Monster Logs do spawn faster multiplayer, because anybody has a chance to drop it, and if anybody picks it up, everybody gets it. I believe is how the Monster Logs work. So it was actually a lot easier to just get all the Monster Logs, because we were playing multiplayer every night. But that's not what this series is about. This series is about being comfy and just hanging out and playing some Risk of Rain. And maybe getting drops sometimes. You know. If they feel like it. Everybody bounced, didn't they? Yeah, he bounced.
And one more, and then we're done. Alright, cross your fingers, guys. We got a 50% chance we'll get the level we want. Flip that coin! Ancient Valley. Let's go. All right, we're there. So, I didn't get the version of level I wanted. I think I'm just going to stay right up here, though, because Ifrits will spawn on this ledge eventually. And there's a scavenger. We'd, we are going to have to go down here and clear out monsters periodically. You know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to be up here. There's the scavenger monster log. So, you know what? This run is a success. Let's go ahead and find our Twilight Porter and hit it and move on to the contact light and call it good. Scavenger Monster Log is actually one of the more interesting bits of lore in Risk of Rain. It's one of my favorite little tidbits. I've actually taken the time to go through and read all of the items and stuff in the database. A lot of it's real interesting if you ever want to kill. It takes... It takes probably an hour or so to go through all of it and really read all of the... Especially the items. Because a lot of the items tell little stories. But the scavenger is one of my favorite little bits of lore in the game. Sure, I'll have another syringe. I love a syringe. But if we can successfully complete this run... We will then only be two monster logs down, and it only took a little over an hour to get us there today. I think we'll just chill right here and hope that any monsters below us despawn. Would be wonderful. Anybody who actually spawns on the platform below us, we can get with the charge field generator. So that's fine. They'll eventually just die. Is that my ancient scepter? Sure is. That adds extra attacks to my machine gun. Very cool ability. I got lots of bullets now. Lots of bullets. Another really fun break you can do is with the stopwatch there. If you're playing with Origin turned on, and you use the stopwatch the moment the Origin portal opens. And it opens predict uh, predictably. It always opens every 10 minutes. So we're due for one in one more minute here. Like we reach 70 minutes on the clock. Because the way that the Imp Vanguard is intended to spawn in is it opens the portal if the clock is at the 10 minute mark or some divisible mark. It doesn't just say, hey, every 10 minutes open a portal. It says, hey, if the timer says 0, 0, 0, spawn in, like open a portal. So if you pause the timer at 0, 0, 0, you get tons of spawns. And if you have cooldown reduction on your use item, you can actually get infinite spawns if you so desire. It's really wacky and it's a really great way to just crash the game. I'm going to go down there for a monster tooth. So if you were to hit your stopwatch right now, and you had Origin turned on. Alright, we're headed to the contact light, kids. With our scavenger monster log in tow. Beautiful. Unless the game crashes, which is possible. The game, she does crash. Mm, I'm locked in this room to start with. Okay. We got a key card. I think I'm going to take the cannon if I only get one key card. I'm not going to need the med bay, probably. I did say probably. 
Actually, it doesn't matter if I beat Providence at all, because... I, I get to keep my scavenger log even if I die, so... But hey, we're gonna be Providence, let's be honest here. We're not gonna spend a lot of time in this level, we're not gonna farm it. We don't need to. If I didn't just get that scavenger log, I might commit to full clearing the contact light to give scavengers more time to spawn in, but we got it, so... We'll just go open our inside bay doors and go pick up our cannon. And all the boxes in the cannon room, too. See if we can get some more auto target missiles. So, yeah, probably till the end of the series, until I get my last monster logs. We're probably just going to be going back and forth between Commando, Huntress, Chef, and Sniper. Energy cell, plasma chain. Not terrible. Actually, it's kind of terrible. Plasma chain's not that great. Or, uh, energy cell's not that great, right? And plasma chain's not that great either, but... There's the auto-target missiles I was looking for. Beautiful. Can never have too many auto-target missiles. I guess unless you have so many that one application of them crashes the game, but you'll have to loop many, many times for that to happen. Just because our our jumps were not ridiculous enough, we got another rusty jetpack now. Just because. Can't really do anything else with more gasoline, but we have it now. That Ancient Scepter might have been the best Providence kill item we could have found to make our machine gun put out more bullets. One day I might like to just stack laser turbines just to see how often we can get the turbine coming out. Can we get it coming out every single shot? That's a hard item to farm for, even with command, because you can only take... You can only do it with Tier 3s. It is a Tier 3 item. And just for good measure, one more permafrost. Alright, let's do it. Launch some fireworks out of the, the helm here. Come on up, good buddy. Yeah, that machine gun is real, real nice. A lot of bullets in his shield to take out his damage shield that he likes to put up. I'm gonna put some fireworks in his face here, see how he likes it. Where'd my box show up? I don't see my box anywhere. I spawned in a box, right? Did it not give me a box? Or am I just dumb and I'm missing it? I don't see it. I know it. Oh, you know what? It probably spawned outside of the boss room somewhere. No more worms. No more worms, and very soon here, no more Providence. Very soon now. Can we hit list Providence? Not while those purplies are on screen there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when he's got his damage shield up, he takes one damage from all attacks. And you just have to hit him a certain number of times to bring the damage shield down. So from that aspect, the Ancient Scepter on Commando is a really good get. So I left my humanity behind, but I got everything else except for an Ancient Wisp logbook and an Ifrit logbook. Still waiting on those two things. I'm 
But if my next farming videos are as profitable as this one, with any luck, two videos left in this series. Because I'm recording this series and uploading it at the same time, I don't know how many videos are in it. Usually I record my entire playthrough and then chop it up so I know at the first video how long it's going to be. But I don't know that for this series. Nobody can call me a liar. Yeah, I just like the description of the character. Like, this is what the scavenger looked like without any of his equipment. But he's like us. He's on the world and he finds all of this cool stuff that he scavenges. And all the stuff that he has. You can see he's got a ukulele and he's got... Uh, I think that's the brilliant behemoth he's holding. And he's got like a soldier's syringe in him. In any event... Ladies and gentlemen, we've climbed up to 9820. We're so close. We're so close.